morning all so today we are going to discuss uh, the rest of the part uh, what we have left in last class uh, i have discussed about the conventional tube then uh, what are the limitation of uh, conventional tube uh, though the video quality is not good i will try to upload uh, tomorrow itself so that you people won't face any sort of uh, problem now the thing is uh, in microwave tubes there are different types of tubes are available now with respect to different types of tubes the working principle is also different but uh, basic concept is same few of the uh, theory says that these uh, tubes are basically operated with the uh, linear characteristics as well as with respect to non linear characteristics linear characteristics means a particular constant value will remain as it is and other parameters will follow that particular constant value but with respect to this uh, non linear here the parameters are going to change parameters are going to change with respect to time as well as with respect to the mediums okay so here i have written few types of microwave tubes since in our syllabus only reflex test one is available so we are only going to discuss about the reflex test one but you people should know about how many type of microwave tubes are available and how this particular tubes are categorized how these tubes are classified so here i have written microwave tubes are of two types one is o type and one is m type o type means it is a ordinary tube or you can say it is called as a linear beam tube in which beam will be projected from anode cathode to anode with a linear variation with no no change with respect to any sort of uh, uh, means what i will say any sort of change in the velocity of an electron okay so that is called linear tube similarly there is called m type tube m type tube means here it is also called as cross field cross field means electric field and magnetic field both will be available in this uh, in this also we have uh, electric field and magnetic field no matter but here it is a cross field tube cross field tube means the electric field and magnetic field both varies with respect to time and the characteristics will change with respect to the mediums also okay so this m type are of two types one is cavity one is slow wave structure cavity means always remember that cavity means it is a empty space in a particular medium in which the energy will be is going to penetrate and then that energy is converted into some sort of energy some other sort of energy we will discuss for example uh, this is our device and here i have drawn like this okay so this is a particular medium in which some uh, each is uh, i have done okay so this is small sort of cavity is available now this cavity what you will do in uh, micro structure this cavity plays a vital role it uh, it basically store the energy the electron what it will penetrate to this particular cavity empty space continuously suppose if the electrons are moving uh, and it is coming Uh, and releasing their energy at this particular point like this all the electrons are jump into that cavity and release their energy so electrons are having its own energy that is called kinetic energy and when this kinetic energy is uh, dump into this cavity the energy got released and that energy either in a form of heat energy either in a form of some thermal energy any sort of energy will be generated but that energy is assumed as our rf energy so from this cavity we will take out as our rf output like this so this is a small view before entering to the reflex test on how it works and what is the working principle of it okay so always remember that cavity means it is a empty space within a particular structure in which the electrons are going to deliver their whole energy or all the electrons which is moving from anode to cathode to anode during that path of transition some energy they will release and that energy we are taking out as an rf output there is some arrangement is there without certain arrangement we cannot extract the rf output from the devices okay and that too these devices are working in 
different principle it can be work as amplifier it can be work as oscillator it can be uh, work as uh, rectifiers what we have seen in our conventional tubes okay but the demerit of conventional tube is what the demerit of conventional tube is it won't work beyond 1 gigahertz so these uh, microwave tubes come into picture who handles who is working at beyond 1 gigahertz in a proper manner they will work in a particular frequency band in a uh, uh, less uh, utilization of power. So this reflex crystals, I can say, it is called low power microwave oscillator. If I will say oscillator means it is act as a generator. It will oscillate continuously, frequency generated. It, is, it generates the frequency component continuously. It will act as an amplifier also. Okay. So those sort of things we are going to discuss today. So here you can see there is a cavity and there is a slow wave structure and then cavity uh, is a different type of cavities are there. So first resonant as I have told if a cavity is there. One minute. in which all the electrons will penetrate and release their energy continuously. Now that is working at a certain component called resonant and that frequency is called resonating frequency. Okay, So resonant structures are there and the resonant structures basically operate for a klystron that we will discuss today. So klystron is a device, is a uh, microwave tube uh, you can say it is called as an oscillator, you can say it is called as a uh, reflex uh, uh, amplifier through which microwave sources can be generated. Due to this, we can extract the RF or outputs. Okay, We can extract RF outputs. So these are the basic thing which we are going to discuss today. And other part, slow wave structure, this is not in our syllabus, but still you people uh, know about the slow wave structure. Slow wave structure working on two principles. One is forward, one is backward. Now, these forward and backward also come into picture in this klystron because klystron is only having one uh, tube in which electrons are moving forward direction as well as moving in a reverse direction. But at the same time, these two things are continuously taken place. Because when the electrons are moving from anode to cathode, between that we are placing some repeller structure which will repel back to the uh, cavity terms and the energy will be released on this particular cavity that I will show in the figure. Okay? So for the time being, uh, resonant, this is the uh, classification klystron and reflex klystron. Reflex klystrons are basically available in two types. One is one cavity, single cavity and one is two cavity. In our syllabus we have only single cavity klystron. Two cavity means two more uh, cavity will be available in that tube. And as and the thing is, as many number of cavity if you increase within that tube, that means you are amplifying the signals. You are amplifying the RF outputs. Okay. So this uh, device is also called as amplifier, but the working principle is that. If a single cavity, fine enough, it will amplify the signal. But if it is more than one number of cavity, it will amplify more number of signals. Means same signal can be amplified in a better way. If there are three cavity, four cavity or multi cavity, if I will say multi cavity, more than one number of cavity is there, that means amplification is very, very good. Okay. But for the time being, we will discuss only the reflex klystron and then this uh, Slow wave structure is having two types. One is I have told as a forward, one is backward. If it is a forward, then it is called TWT. TWT means it is called traveling wave tube. Okay. It is similar to reflex klystron, but in this it will be in a form of a helical structure, traveling wave structure. Okay. That we will not discuss. And then there is a backward wave uh, structure is there in which BWA and BWO. So it is a backward wave amplifier and backward wave oscillator. Both are available. Okay, Because these tubes are basically work as an amplifier, work as a source, 
work as a generator, work as an amplifier, work as a oscillator, whatever the applications are there. Okay. Now, before entering to this refresh crystal, these are the sudden particular facts are there. Important facts. One, low power vacuum tubes used to produce the oscillation at micro frequency. Yes, these all tubes, this micro power means whenever the potential is very very less then only the frequency is going to be very very high because potential we relate with respect to the wavelength and the wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency component so once the frequency component is high that means your wavelength is definitely going to be very very less so wavelength is very very less means potential is also is very very less if the potential is less your power is also going to be very very less so here i have written it is called as a low power okay low power low power vacuum tube <coughs> to produce the oscillation at a microwave frequency since our mobile phones are working at a, a microwave frequency in a gigahertz or uh, in a certain spectrum suppose 2.5 gigahertz 1.6 gigahertz whatever it is okay if it is in gigahertz means frequency component is very very high if the frequency component is very very high that means utilization of power is also very very less okay next the working principle of these whole tubes either you go for this uh, linear tube either you go for this uh, uh, cross field tube whatever it is or you can consider reflex crystal, or you can consider TWT, you can consider this low wave structure, whatever it is. The micro tubes are basically operate in these two working principles. Two basic principles are there. One, velocity modulation. So that velocity modulation, uh, I have discussed earlier how we are going to energize the signal in that uh, triode figure I have shown. In that, two plates are there. One is cathode, one is anode. Electrons are moving from cathode to anode okay these are the two plates this is cathode and this is anode so electrons are moving from cathode to anode but in tri triode water plane there is one small sort of grid is available in grid we provide the external potential that potential energize the electrons energize the electrons in the sense of velocity so velocity will increase how that velocity will increase those relations today we will discuss okay so velocity automatically it will increase and it will reach us to the anode terminal and dissipate the energy so that current will flow from anode to cathode okay so this is called uh, velocity and current modulation done so it depends upon two things one is velocity modulation and one is current modulation now the thing is how this velocity modulation and current modulation comes velocity modulation i have discussed with you now now what is current modulation current modulation means initially the electron beams are moving with a velocity v let us consider small u initial condition okay now when the external potential is given hmm, when the external uh, when the external potential is given to the grid and the grid will energize the electron beam so velocity will increase so i will show that relation if the velocity will increase your current definitely is going to increase and if we change the characteristics of current with respect to the potential then it is called as a current modulation okay so velocity of the electron if it is changes current flow is also going to change so the velocity modulation and current modulation are interrelated so these are the two uh, principle on which our these whole tubes are working on it okay next crystals are basically used as an amplifier yes it is used as an amplifier so these are the basic important facts for a particular microwave tubes now we will discuss about the reflex klystron okay so reflex klystron how it will work 
what is the working principle, what are the features are available, how we are going to analyze it, what are the particular terms are there through which each and every part can be identified so that it will be easy to understand. So how that electrons are velocity modulated, how the electrons are energized, how the power is calculated, what are the modes are there, how that number of modes will help us to generate that which particular power we are going to use if we increase the number of mode what will happen so different sort of things are there that we are going to discuss today okay so let me erase it okay so here you can see there are uh, two figures I have drawn So right hand side is the simple diagram for the reflex electron. Reflex electron as I have told there is only one cavity. This is the structure of a reflex electron. Think this is a particular cylindrical part in which a certain small one more cylindrical will be available just like as uh, what I show. So it is just like as a curve. Okay, it is just like as an enclosure. So that enclosure acts as a cavity. In that cavity, all the electron beam which is projected from cathode towards the anode are injected into that cavity and that electrons release their kinetic energy and which is converted into the RF energy. Okay, that we will discuss now. Now here you can see as the structure we have a repeller. Why do we require repeller? The question comes. The repeller works as in order to move the cathode, uh, this uh, cathode electron, it is projected in this particular direction, okay, towards anode. But since here there is no sort of anode is there, anode we are considering that cavity as an anode in which we are providing certain potential to it, okay, externally. Externally, we are providing the potential to the this re-entrant cavity. Re-entrant cavity means here continuously the electron beams will be projected and from where we will take the output as an RF output. Okay, So, <coughs> here you can see there is a repeller. So, when the electrons are moving in this particular direction, it must return back to the cavity. So how it will return back? Somebody must be there at the above with the same polarity so that the same polarity of charge repel back. So repeller is a negatively charged. You can see here it is negatively charged. Minus V2 is provided to the repeller. Now if the repeller plate is negatively charged, if the electrons are moving towards the repeller, so negative negative get repel with each other and the electrons will return back to the cavity. Now here you can see there is a small cavity gap is there. It will travel. Okay. Now when it is traveling through this particular gap, during that time only the velocity modulation takes place. Because in this cavity we have provided the positive potential. You can see this cavity, this other cavity. I have took only the TS section means cut section, first one. So if I will cut that first one, it will look like this, okay? So here, this cavity is provided with a positive potential. This positive potential energizes the electrons when it is crossing from this particular point to this particular point. This is called cavity gap. So when the electrons are projected, here accelerating grid is there, no problem. That accelerating grid will accelerate the electrons. But after that, what happens? So electron beams are projected towards the cavity and in which small cavity gap is there with a small space D, let us consider. So when this gap, when they are moving, when they are crossing this gap and moving towards the repeller, the velocity modulation takes place. <coughs> Why? Because this cavity is provided with a positive potential. And when the positive potential is provided to that particular gap, uh, part at this particular part it will energize the electrons they have we will, we will see that uh, relations how that uh, velocity modulation takes place okay 
So here it will energize the electron. When it is energized the electron, it is simply crossing the gap and moving towards the repeller. So when it is moving towards the repeller, the electrons again repel back to the cavity. Now when it is repelled back to the cavity continuously and they will release the energy. The electrons will release the energy. Some, uh, for example, electrons are penetrating continuously to this particular point. What will happen? Some, uh, after a few times, my hand will become a little bit uh, heat. Some, if I will uh, throw a particular uh, ball or particular any object continuously to a certain point continuously and after few moments what will happen some energy dissipation will be there so that kinetic energy is converted into the heat energy so similarly these blue lines you can see these lines are nothing but the flow of electrons now flow of electrons continuously penetrating to the cavity now our motive is what we need to extract the RF output RF energy we need so a particular device must be there which will store the energy so here cavity is there this cavity will store the energy okay this cavity is an empty space which will help us to extract the RF output so when the energy is released when the kinetic energy is converted into an RF energy it will be holding in that cavity until unless we are not using so here you can see there is an RF output so once the energy is released, it is we can extract the RF output signal for our usage. This RF output signal can be used for transmission purpose also. It will act as a carrier which will carry our signal because these are the higher frequency signal. So high frequency signal are basically used to transmission purpose. Okay. In uh, uh, principle of communication, we have seen how we are transmitting the signal with the help of uh, frequency modulated signal. So here, always remember that frequency modulation comes with respect to this theory only. The reflex klystron is a source which is working on a frequency modulated signal. Okay. So here, the RF output signal can be determined. So what are the structures are available? We had a cathode terminal here. We had a repeller at here. We had a cavity, resonant cavity. Resonant cavity, why it is called resonant? Because it operates at a resonating frequency and which resonating frequency we are considering as a RF frequency. Okay. Now, this resonant cavity is act as a cathode terminal. Okay. In which all the electrons are attracted and dumped with each other at a certain point, in a certain cavity. So that energy is released in the kinetic energy released into the heat energy and the heat energy is again we are considering as a noise and that noise is called as an RF noise or we are taking as a RF signal. Okay. So here the cathode a anode is provided with a positive potential. Yes, positive potential so that it will attract the electrons done. Cathode is a negatively charged. So here you can see it is connected with a negatively charged. This is the negatively charged, you can see it, okay. And here the repeller is also a negatively charged. It will repel your electron return back to the cavity, which will help the electron to return back to the cavity terminal. This is the working principle of a repeller. And for this reason it is called as a reflex, so it is reflected back. The electrons are reflected back to the cavity terminals, okay. So this is the accelerating grid. This is cathode, this is the cavity gap, this is the resonating cavity. It will look like uh, this is a uh, tube. In circle, one more small semicircular tube will be there. And if you cut it, it will look like this one. So this is called as an example of a reflex klystron. Now in order to analyze all these things, now there is a two things. Uh, I have discussed that uh, forward structure and backward structure earlier. Now here, in reflex klystron, we have only one cavity. It worked on a two basic principle. What? One is current modulation, one is velocity modulation. Done? Apart from that, it is called as a single cavity act as a buncher. Now why it is called buncher? Buncher means the number of electrons are penetrating continuously in a form of a bunch of electron in a particular point of a cavity that is called as a buncher okay so single cavity act as a buncher and catcher 
buncher as well as catcher buncher means bunch of electrons are moving and catcher means when they return back means like this, these are the buncher electrons which are moving continuously and when they return back to the cavity it, uh, somebody needs to catch it so it is called as a catcher so that cavity will act as a catcher so here when it will act as a catcher when it will act as a buncher forward movement of electron these are the forward movement of electron so when the electrons are moving it is in the form of a bunch bunch of electrons are moving so uh, the cavity is called as a buncher cavity okay so remember this okay so if it is electrons are moving means if it is moving in a uniform direction then in a forward direction then we are saying this whole cavity is called as a buncher cavity but when these electrons are returned back to the same cavity in a backward direction or in a reverse direction of the electron then it is called catcher cavity so these are the two terms for a same cavity but working principle is different once if it is working in a forward mode then that cavity is called as a buncher cavity next if it is working in a uh, if it is collecting all the electrons which is repelled back from the repeller then the cavity is called as a catcher so this is the working principle of a buncher and catcher okay now in order to analyze the whole concept behind this uh, uh, reflex crystal we have a mechanism because this mechanism maximum times in exam people used to get what is the mechanism of this uh, reflex crystal what is the working principle of this reflex crystal how that velocity modulation takes place what are the different parts are available within that reflex crystal so that uh, these all points what i have discussed it must be justified okay so here i have drawn the circuit analysis or the extracted part means whatever the device we have same thing i have drawn in a more specific way this is the mechanism of a reflex crystal now how it works let's see now in this figure also you can see repeller is there yes a repeller is there because without repeller we cannot repel back the electrons second we have a cathode yes we have a cathode cathode is also called as electron gun because it will project the electron okay and this is called as our tungsten element done next here we have an accelerating grid here also we have a accelerating grid which will accelerate the electrons which will accelerate the flow of electrons okay done so accelerating grid is connected with positive potential yes it will enhance the flow of electrons so it is a positive potential is given okay next it will enter to this uh, cavity gap here we have cavity gap okay here we have cavity gap now how these electron beams are moving and repel back to this cavity that we will analyze in this particular picture okay here what happens electrons are moving and it is repelled back to the same but why it is repelling it is due to the repeller but why the curves are small small and uh, small then medium then bigger one why that analysis we will do here because this is called as a velocity modulation of an electron you can see at this particular point all the electrons are moving with a uniform velocity but when it is crossing to the cavity gap and enter to the repeller region it repel back to the again cavity here you can see few will take more time to release their energy few time uh, few uh, of this uh, electron will take less time to release their energy this is the curve these are the curves are generated this is a ve uh, velocity modulated curve means if i will take this upper curve let us consider curve 1 this is curve uh, this is one bigger one this is two and this is three so 1 2 3 so, so one is highly modulated two is less modulated three is less modulated but why it is happening that we will analyze in this particular figure okay rest of the arrangement is same what i have drawn but my thing is i need to explain why these curves are taken place why it is not rectangle why it is not in other form why it is in this mode only that we will discuss in this okay 
so here you can see there is a cavity gap d this is a cavity gap here this cavity gap okay now in this cavity gap or in this cavity we have provided the positive potential v1 done you, because it is an anode it will attract the electrons so here also positive potential is given v0 v0 is called as a dc beam voltage okay we need to identify what are the potential we are providing to the circuits okay so first one is dc beam voltage so v0 is dc beam voltage so dc beam voltage is given now dc beam voltage is having a sinusoid representation it is an rf signal rf noise signal we need to enhance it okay so here these waves are nothing but potential plus and minus just these are these are not coils these are the waves okay Poten uh, positive potential and negative potential suppose if i will draw these waves like this so these are the waves okay means this is the potential positive potential as well as negative potential then same thing now when the electrons are crossing this potential when it is uh, encounter the positive part when it is encounter the negative part of that potential what will happen now let's see here three points i am considering in this figure i will take only one cycle so that you people can understand let us consider this only one part hmm? so here the peak value is a b is the zero crossing point in which no potential is there and c is the negative peak value then now when the electrons are crossing through this particular point when the potential is very very high so what will happen electrons which is encountering the positive potential means this is the positive potential the electron velocity electron velocity increases potential will increase i will show that relation then you can understand but for the time being just understand that when the electrons encounter the positive half cycle the velocity will increase and they will move in a faster manner so they are moving in a faster manner so they are moving in a faster manner okay toward where toward repeller and repeller what he will do he will repel back to the cavity okay he will repel back to the cavity and the electron will release the energy kinetic energy converted into the rf energy and we will take the rf output done so it will velocity will increase done next now when the electron is crossing through this zero crossing means zero crossing means no potential is there potential is there but it is zero at this point neither it is a plus neither it is a minus it is only a neutral point so there is no change in velocity so at b point no change in velocity no change in velocity so that means it remain constant so you can see that when this third line is crossing through this point b it is slightly less with respect to a so a is highly velocity modulated electron b is neutral there is no change in the velocity let us consider velocity is v1 this no change velocity is v2 now when the electron encounters the negative half cycle negative half cycle means when it is crossing the point c let us consider point c now what will happen when the potential reduces your velocity is also definitely get reduced so here v3 now v1 is greater than v2 greater than v3 v3 is the least velocity available when the electrons is crossing encountered to the negative half cycle of a dc beam voltage okay this voltage is called as dc beam voltage okay so due to which the velocity modulation takes place and once this electron velocity is changed with respect to the potential of dc beam then we will say that 
the electrons are velocity modulated velocity why it is called velocity modulation modulation means changing the characteristics of one signal with respect to other signal then it is called modulation here what we are changing here we are changing the velocity of electron with respect to the dc beam voltage dc beam voltage so if the beam voltage is positive velocity increases if the beam velocity is negative velocity decreases so due to which this is called as a modulation okay D uh, with respect to this i can justify for current modulation also because current is directly proportional to the velocity as you have read that i is equals to dq by dt q is the charge and dt is inversely proportional so charge can be written with respect to some relation with velocity and all rho v and u so those are the certain relations are there so if you go through those relation it will be easy for us okay so velocity encountered for positive v1 is high velocity at b is neutral velocity at c crossing through the negative half is less so if there is a variation in well velocity of electron then it is called velocity modulation okay so here you can see when the electrons are projected and crossing through this cavity gap i have identified three points when point a means dc beam voltage is high point b it is a neutral point zero crossing point bit c the dc beam voltage is having a negative peak value if the electron beams are crossing through this particular point and encountered these points velocity modulated takes place it is not like that it is only one wave is there there are n number of waves here i have considered only for one wave to make you understand why this sort of things are happening okay here n number of waves will be there and n number of electron beams will be projected continuously so i have considered only one thing to understand how that velocity modulation is going on okay so this is the basic concept and now uh, you uh, the, uh, your doubt can be why this particular point is chosen why not this why this because when we are going to identify that modes this modes is always identified as a 3/4 of a cycle 3/4 of a particular cycle okay and the time period we will discuss that is transit time period t not and t r are there that i will discuss in the uh now only so these are the time period so uh, the total time period means the total time period required for the transit these signals transit time period is there anode to cathode to anode what is the time period required to flow from uh, cathode to anode similarly here also we will identify those time period and we will calculate it what are the transit time what are the transit angle what is the velocity modulated velocity modulations how to calculate how to determine the rf output power because our main output uh, objective is to extract the rf power so that rf power we have to identify okay so these are the basic mechanism what i have told i will share the notes need not to worry what i have spoke i have written all those thing i will scan it and i will share in your group okay so these are the basic fundamental terms with respect to the reflex klistron now we will discuss with respect to the derivations means what are the features are there whatever the thing i have discussed here we need to justify it and only with the help of certain relation we will justify all those thing okay okay <clears throat> so whatever the thing we have discussed with respect to this uh, part now we are going to discuss with respect to this as a mode of oscillation now since uh, as i have discussed and the reflex klistron act as an oscillator so definitely there must be some sort of oscillations are there oscillations of a particular wave 
and if there is a oscillator oscillation in a particular wave that means with the help of that we can generate some sort of frequency component rf signals okay high frequency now the question comes at which particular point we will extract the rf signal and at which particular point we are going to lose the rf signal that is the main point now as i have discussed at this particular peak point the maximum energy is going to dissipate so that point is the maximum point at which we are extracting the rf signal always remember that whenever the electron beams are intersecting to the positive half of a dc beam voltage then only the rf signals are going to be extracted because at that time only the electrons are highly energized and when the electrons are highly energized when they dissipate the kinetic energy the maximum output energy what we can observe as an rf output but when the electrons at the same uh, uh, part if i will say when the electrons encounter the negative half cycle they deteriorate their own energy deteriorate they doesn't support or they doesn't release so much energy that we can extract as an rf output so only the thing is that whenever the electrons encounter the positive half positive half of a per, uh, dc beam voltage and they dissipate the maximum energy so that point we need to identify and that is identified with the help of this mode of oscillation now the same thing i have drawn here okay this is our cavity gap voltage cavity gap voltage means it is a dc beam voltage okay because there we have provided the potential v1 this is c so this is what this is a cavity gap cavity gap is provided what with the potential v0 v0 is called as a dc beam voltage so dc beam voltage now dc beam voltage with respect to this dc beam voltage the electrons are energized electrons are velocity modulated so here when it is peak i have identified as a point a when it is a neutral point i have identified as a point b when it is a negative half cycle peak value then it is a c now here two time come into picture one capital t that is called rf frequency time period one complete cycle one complete cycle of a dc beam voltage is called as a rf frequency so t is called as a resonating time period resonating time period means rf signal okay but how to enhance it for that this velocity modulation come into picture okay next what are the a b c these are the points peak point neutral point and negative peak point in which electrons are crossing so when at point a electron encounters it follows the path velocity is highly modulated so it is highly modulated b neutral same small same velocity what it is moving same but c less velocity less energy so less energy and where they will dissipate they will dissipate only in the positive half of a this dc beam voltage positive half cycle only in the positive half cycle then only the maximum energy can be determined if they dissipate in the negative energy in uh, this negative half cycle that means maximum energy we are going to lose because it will compensate it will not compensate the additive value rather than it will decrease the value if it decrease the value we cannot extract the rf output okay that is the first thing so once these values are identified once these points are identified next we have to identify the time period so here you can see i have written t not t not is nothing but a returning time period returning time period of an electron from where to where crossing the gap and return back to the same cavity from this particular point to this particular point this is called returning time period so here i have written t not t not is called as a returning time period now this returning time period and the resonating time period is having a relation that is t not is equals to n plus 3 by 4 of t hmm. n plus 3 by 4 why it is n n indicates the number of modes how many number of modes are there always remember reflex crystal when it is having the lower mode then only the maximum output we can determine but if you go for the higher modes 
the less amount of energy dissipation will be there and less amount of RF output will be observed. We cannot extract the maximum power. Maximum RF output is only obtained at the lower modes. Okay, that we will see. So T naught is equal to N plus 3 by 4 into T where this N plus 3 by 4 I can write as capital N and this capital N is called as a bunching. It is called as a bunch, bunch of electrons. So bunch of electrons where it is dissipated, dissipated in the 3 fourth of a positive half cycle. 3 fourth means first, second, third, fourth. So 3 fourth of a particular half cycle. So one complete cycle, then one fourth. One half cycle plus one fourth means three fourth. Okay. So three fourth means, so it is a three by four. So in the three fourth of a positive half cycle, the energy is going to be dissipated. So here bunch of bunching occur at n is equals to n plus three by four of positive half cycle. Remember this. Because at this point only the maximum energy we are going to extract. But if it is at negative half cycle, we are going to lose all energy. No RF output will be identified. And one more thing, here small n indicates the number of modes. n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. These all are number of modes. Okay. As the number of mode is less, the maximum output we can expect. So here I have written mode of oscillation, n is equal to 3 by 4. When it will be 3 by 4? When small n is 0. Then 1 3 by 4, then 2 3 by 4, then 3 3 by 4, then 4 3 by 4, like that you can identify. And what are the number of modes? The number of mode is 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Modes are nothing but oscillations. When the number of mode is less, the maximum output we can expect. So when you substitute 0, n is equals to 3 by 4. So at 3 by 4, we are extracting the maximum RF output. When n is equals to 1, then it is 1 by 3 by 4. The intensity will reduce because the time period taken by to taken by an electron to move from this point to this point is time period is more. If the time period is more, frequency is less. Frequency is less, wavelength is high. Wavelength is high, potential drop is also high. So if the potential drop is high, we cannot extract the maximum frequency. Okay. So this is the number of modes. This is the mode of oscillation. So with respect to this, the calculations are to be done in which we are going to calculate velocity modulation, we are going to calculate transit time and other parameters. Uh, time the doesn't permit me to extend it. Power and efficiency. Okay. One minute. Okay. So in few three minutes, just uh, we have a glimpse on uh, that what we are going to discuss in the next class. That I will jot it down so that. You people can go through it. <coughs> now once this mode of oscillation is known, the next motive is to determine the power and efficiency of this particular system. Because our main motive is whether my system which I am using is efficient or not whether my system is giving the proper output or not. If it is not giving, then why I am going to use this particular device? What is the use of it? So I need to identify, I need to justify why I am using that particular device. I am using that particular device means some motive, motivation must be there, some objective must be there, so that this particular device will help me to carry out certain works. My work is to deliver the information to a certain distance. Always remember this microwave communication is based on line of sight propagation means point to point. Suppose uh, this is one base station and this is one base station. So these two base stations must be in a line of sight propagation then only the communication will be taken place. Okay. 
so like that and the depend upon the structure of the surface it matters but line communication line of sight communication must be there sometime height of the antenna will be more sometime height of the antenna will be less because due to the they have implanted on the building but the line of sight communication must be there throughout the region okay so here power and efficiency So in this power and efficiency, we are going to calculate a different parameter. First, you need to identify the RF current. Okay, RF potential is there. You need to calculate RF current. But before calculating RF current, you need to calculate the velocity modulation of electrons because that is the main uh, important fact behind this I uh, RF current because RF currents are identified with the help of this velocity modulated electrons because when the electrons are moving from this sort of situation the electron velocity changes and you uh, and we do not uh, have any sort of idea that which particular point what sort of electrons are going to change but for the theoretical analysis we can identify with some sort of relation and we can justify that yes at this particular point this thing happens for initial condition for this sort of condition and we need to justify it okay so in this uh, power and efficiency first we are going to calculate the velocity modulation then we are going to calculate the rf current once the RF current is known, then we are going to identify the transit time. Uh, with the help of this transit time also, you can determine the RF current also. Then once this all parameter is known, then you can proceed for RF power. RF current is there, RF potential is there, multiply these two, you will get the RF power. And once this RF power is known, you can go for efficiency. Now how we can determine the efficiency? Efficiency is known with respect to output by input into 100. Now, this uh, reflex test on input is what? Input is a DC beam voltage. Okay. So, the power what we are providing to that particular value. So, if uh, T DC, DC beam voltage V naught into I naught. Let us consider like this. For example, I will discuss all these things. So V0 is the DC beam voltage, I0 is the DC current and one is PRF. PRF means it is the output power. Let us consider this is a black box. This black box is a reflex klystron. Reflex klystron. In this I am providing the DC potential V0 and DC current I0. But what I am extracting is RF, RF potential, VRF and IRF that I have calculated within this scenario. So here I can determine PRF and here I can determine PDC. So what is the efficiency of this system? The efficiency of this system is PRF divided by PDC into 100. So this is our answer. But to reach to this particular point, we have different sort of stages are there. And all stages are interlinked with each other. And we need to understand all those stages in a brief manner so that the efficiency can be justified. Okay. So next class, we are going to discuss about this uh, power and efficiency and with some sort of numericals if time permit because derivations are there which are quite easy and you can understand and make you understand because if it, if it is difficult for you to understand uh, for the time being but if you practice it it is very very easy all are interlinked with each other okay so thank you all